So I just finished the Isle of Armor DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield on the day that the Crown Tundra is supposed to be releasing as of recording. Uh, it hasn't released yet, even though they said it's releasing today. It's currently 5.38, I have to go to work, so I'm not going to get to play it, but oh well. I do have a bit of a head cold, so excuse the head coldy soundy voice. And one last bit of housekeeping, if you are um, wondering about what my opinions of Pokemon Sword and Shield as a base game even are, you can find those by digging through my old blog post at critigry.wordpress.com, or more succinctly, I can just say right now, I really fucking love Pokemon Sword. I think it's one of the best Pokemon games ever made. I know that's not a hugely popular opinion, but I just think it's great. I held off getting the DLC expansion pass immediately for monetary reasons, and I was going to try and pick it up before the Crown Tundra came out because I have a feeling you'll probably want to do the Isle of Armor stuff before the Crown Tundra stuff. Um, but when they announced these two DLCs, it became quite clear that the Crown Tundra DLC was the one that was going to introduce all of the legendary Pokemon from old games. That was the thing I was really interested in, and by the look of it, I was interested in the location of the Isle of Armor, but not much else regarding story or anything like that. Just to recap quickly, the Isle of Armor DLC introduced a new island, which is a wild area is which the whole island is basically a wild area which is a departure from the main game where only one part of the game was a wild area. It also introduces the story of the dojo and the story of a legendary Pokemon Cubfu who you later evolve into Urshifu um, who you can evolve in one of two ways to get a different stance. And also finally it reintroduced hundreds of old Pokemon game uh, old Pokemon from the earlier games. It's also worth noting that it allowed you to unlock Gigantamax forms for Pokemon which did not have them previously. You would have to catch a Gigantamax version of that Pokemon if you wanted to be able to Gigantamax it rather than the ordinary Dynamaxing. But now you can just uh, do a whole, it's kind of grindy, but you can do a whole bunch of battles. Um, a whole bunch of max raid battles which will make max mushrooms spawn and when you get three of those you can turn uh, a Pokemon that has the capability of Gigantamaxing into a Gigantamax version of that Pokemon. Also, Venusaur and Blastoise got good Gigantamax versions and you got to choose one of them at the start of the game. Of course, I went for Bulbasaur. Who do you think I am? So yeah, like I said, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from the um, main story of the DLC. I wasn't hugely uh, excited for the main story of the DLC, but I'll go ahead and say I enjoyed it. It, it wasn't too long. Um, it didn't overstay its welcome, it was charming enough, we saw some recurring characters, we saw some new characters, there were some fights, there were also some interesting things where you had to do stuff outside of what you'd normally do in Pokemon, so for instance you would have to capture, or not capture, so you would have to catch three Slowpokes who were really fast because they were the Galarian versions of them, um, and stuff like that. And I don't mean catches in a Pokemon battle, I mean catches in literally run into the mountain in the open world as they were running away from you. So stuff that broke away from the norm, which was kind of nice to see. The story dialogue had lots of um, humour, it had lots of funny moments, which uh, is, you know, it's kind of, it's a nice lead on from the Pokemon Sword game. It fits in very nicely. I think a lot of the reason why I really like this DLC is just because it's more Pokemon Sword, and I really like Pokemon Sword, as I've already said. Specifically, the open world portion of this game, though, of this DLC, um, I I think I, what I really like is it doubles down on the max raid battles a lot. Like they feel like a portion of the main game. Whereas they almost feel like the focus of the open world content in the DLC. You're supposed to explore, you're supposed to be looking at all of these max raid dens. And while the, um, I have lots of, if you've been following me on Twitter, you'll know I have lots of nitpicks about the max raid battles. Um, I still think that, uh, connection issues aside, terrible, terrible multiplayer netcode aside, uh, when you actually get into a max raid battle, they are really, really fun. Um, but that's talking more about Pokemon Sword for game itself, but I just like how the DLC emphasizes those battles a little bit more. They've really got something great there, and I think it's really good that they're emphasizing that. I think the open world itself is um, nicely varied for an island. There are some biomes there. Um, you've got the desert in the center of it, you've got the beach, and then the forest, and then the caves, and you know, there's some nice variety there as there needs to be. And one thing I like about it is it feels a little bit more, I briefly touched on this in the weekly waypoint, but it feels more segmented, which might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing. The wild area in the main region of Galar just feels so sprawling and wide and open, and as you're cycling through it, subregions just feel haphazardly uh, decided. Uh, which wouldn't be a problem except when you move between subregions, usually the weather changes, 
and it's really uh, weird uh, how you can just be riding across an open field and one minute it's nice and sunny and the next you're in the middle of a blizzard and that just didn't feel right whereas the wild area of the Isle of Armour is a lot more segmented you know when you're going into a new area and when the weather changes it feels more natural there were also less frame drops than in the wild area in the main region there were still some frame drops like some pretty bad frame drops but not as bad as the main area of the game, I feel like. I also like how they emphasise exploration by having diglets that you can find around a the place. There's 151 diglets, because of course it's 151. And um, I haven't, I've got about 30 so far, but 5, 10, 20 and 30 all got me in a lowland form of a pre-existing Pokemon. So that's pretty damn cool. I was worried it was going to be one of those things uh, where the rewards felt underwhelming, but it turns out they put that section of the game in the dojo that you can upgrade because oh my god does that thing eat your watts for some very mediocre rewards. I think I spent fif about 50,000 watts purely on a vending machine because it cost loads to just get different levels of stock in for it and I think this is Game Freak basically realising that watts didn't have much of a use and people had hundreds of thousands of spare watts so they were introducing a watt sink for the game uh, which is a very weird phrase to say out loud. So onto the legendary Pokemon stuff, I didn't particularly love how Cubfu, Cubfu, sorry, Cubfu, uh, just gets thrown at you. Like, I always liked how legendary Pokemon in the old games felt like this huge thing that you lead up to, uh, but here it's just a Pokemon. Like, it's not even the only Cubfu in existence. There's no, there's nothing legendary about it. It just gets given to you, and there's other ones out there. Like you, you. I mean, spoilers for the story, but you fight. Uh, Mustard's version of Cubfu, he has his own Cubfu, and it looks like they even have a gender, so you might even be able to breed them and make more Cubfu, I'm not so sure about that, but if that is the case, it really makes you question what the status of a legendary Pokemon should be. And while now I'm happy with my evolved version of Urshifu, it definitely feels more like a legendary Pokemon in that regard, it is also weird that I'm not, and I haven't played all of the Pokemon games to completion, so I don't know this, but I think it might be the first legendary Pokemon that evolves. So yeah, I had this little bear cub dude and I did not feel like he was particularly legendary, but I did like evolving him into Urshifu, choosing which form I wanted him to have, um, and then even though it was a bit of a grind getting the max mushrooms for him and doing the story stuff to figure out uh, the honey that he needed to actually down the max mushroom soup, it's a whole thing. I did also like unlocking my Gigantamax form of Urshifu. I also liked how the absolute final fight of the DLC in the form, or at least in the story, of the DLC in the form of Mustard, uh, the second time you fight him, it was actually challenging because while he uses Pokemon with fighting moves, it's still, he still has a roster of varied types, like he has like an electrical Pokemon with a fighting move, and then he has like a dragon Pokemon with fighting moves. It's everything that a gym leader isn't, and you had to, I had to really think on my toes and um, work around fighting him. And I was worried that because my Pokemon are high level, um, that it would be a cakewalk, all of the fights in this DLC. But they do lots to mitigate that, like for instance when you are um, doing the tower to get Kubfu, uh, you, like to evolve into Urshifu, you have to go up against five different uh, boss fights, uh, or sorry, just five different trainers, and um, it's it's not it's there. I'm tripping over my words. It's not easy uh, because they only let you take Cubfu in there, and he's a new Pokemon, so it's unlikely that you, unless you were playing the game just for hundreds and hundreds of hours before the DLC came out, which I know some people were. Um, you didn't just have the XP candies to just throw at him and make him level 100, like, unstoppable god. And it should also be mentioned that as far as pacing goes, they pretty much tell you to get him to level 70 before taking on that tower. So again, if you don't have the XP candies, which I didn't, it emphasises going and taking on the max raid battles around the island, uh, which was really, really cool. It paced it out a little bit. Um, and it got me to play my favourite part of the game for a story reason, which was kind of lacking in the main story. Um, and yeah, I understand that people's mileage may vary with that because they may already have had like loads of double XL candies, or sorry, I don't think that exists. Loads of XL XP candies uh, just stocked up to throw at him like straight off the bat, but I didn't, and it was a pretty enjoyable experience for me because of that. So yes, I really liked the Isle of Armour, I thought it was a wonderful DLC, a wonderful addition to the game. I know people will argue that it should have been endgame from the very start, 
Um, but I I kind of disagree. I think the Max Raid battles in the Galar region in the wild area, that was intended to be the end game. It was just weird that they introduced it to you throughout the main story the first time around. So like you're running through it with like level 12 Pokemon. I think if they had purely reserved that area for end game, people wouldn't have had an argument about there needing to be an end game. Uh, but the way they did it was kind of weird. I do think that going forwards in future generations, they should just go down the Isle of Armour route and make the entire game a wild area. You can still have routes and everything like that, um, but have it be seamless, have it uh, be slightly more open, slightly less linear, uh, because then you can really encourage exploration, make it really feel like a modern RPG, and I think it would be absolutely fantastic. You can even have it so that the Pokemon dens don't unlock until endgame. That's just a simple thing that you could do. My favourite thing about this generation by far is that it feels more like a living game. I feel like I can keep doing max raid battles, finding more Pokemon, um, getting the best uh, IVs and EVs out of all of them. They've made that stuff really accessible to all users to understand instead of what it used to be. Um, and I feel like I can just keep uh, keep on grinding out uh, max level Pokemon that are my favourite ones and finding some really good stat Pokemon, breeding them, doing some fun wonder trade things. But I don't even have to do all that to pace my gameplay out because Crown Tundra releases well, technically today, but once again, haven't seen it yet, haven't seen it around yet, and and Nintendo normally release things at 3pm, and the release date does say today on everywhere I've looked, so I don't know what's going on with that, but that's fine, because I had Isle of Armour stuff to do, and I was actually worried I wouldn't finish it in time for the Crown Tundra, so yes, very excited for the Crown Tundra, you'll probably hear a thoughts on on that soon, um, and yeah, I, I'm very happy with this DLC, I think it was great, I think it was a much better decision than doing, like, a, a third version of the game like they used to, or a Sword 2 and a Shield 2 like they've done before, or anything like that. I think this was the way to go, and I hope they continue doing stuff like this in the future. Thank you for listening to my Pokey Ramble, uh, and I will see you in the next video where I will hopefully have slightly less of a stuffy nose.